In this video, we're going to be looking at the key generation transform when using SAP Business Objects Data Services to load data into SAP HANA. So the first thing we need to do is to log into Data Services. So we do that by going to Start. We can access that from All Programs, Data Services, and we choose the Data Services Designer. Log in with your credentials. So for me, it's student and the password is welcome one and then it logs you into the system so to demonstrate this I'm firstly going to build a new project called key generation within that we'll have a job called key generation And then we'll have a data flow called key generation on our job canvas. So what we're going to do firstly is we're going to take a table from our HANA database. If I go into my tables folder, we have these tables. And I'm going to take this table called the DIM customer table. So I'm going to drag this onto my canvas as a source. Now I'm going to create a target table, again in the HANA STS schema, and I'm going to call this key generation, and click on OK. Now of course, when I load this data into this table, what's going to happen is that we're going to create an exact replica of this table to this table. If I select the magnifying glass of the source table, you can see that we have a unique identifier for the customer ID and if I double click on the actual table we can see the metadata shows that again we have a unique identifier for this customer ID. So I should be able to join the source table to the target table and execute the job and click on yes. The job should, the job should run no problem and then whatever rows we had in the source table will have in the target table. So if I go to my monitor tab, we can see that we had 124 in the source and the output shows we've got 124 tables. So if I go back and select the magnifying glass or the view data icon for the target table, we can see that we've loaded 124 table, 124 rows. And you can see that again, we're using this ID. The problem is, let's imagine in the real world, we're taking data from many transactional systems and we're loading them to a singular data warehouse system within SAP HANA. Let's imagine again that this is a primary key. Now we know that this is a primary key because I've loaded based on the source table. So in the SAP table, we now have a primary key. But we've, because we've got a primary key, we're going to have a small problem. Now, if I run this job as it is, we won't have any problems because if I double click on what's called my table loader options and go to the second tab, what we're essentially doing is deleting the table and recreating it. So of course, even though I've got 124 unique IDs, I can run this table again because it will drop and recreate the table. So I'm going to sh demonstrate key generation by de turning this option off, going to my bulk loader options and turning off the bulk loader. So now what it's going to try and do is it's going to try and load the same 124 rows into the same table. Let's try and run the job again. So then I click on OK. And what we should get is a primary key constraint. Because of course, if I go to my error tab here and I scroll to the right hand side, what we can see is we've got an integrity constraint violation. Now, of course, this is because we have a primary key as our target column and we're trying to duplicate the additional rows from 100, from 1 to 124 into the same table. That means we get a primary key constraint or an integrity constraint violation. 
There are many ways to get around this. One of the ways is using the key generation transform. So let me demonstrate that to you now. So if I go back to the data flow, again, we've got the issue because we're trying to load the same key into the target table. Now, what we can do between these two objects is include an object called key generation. So to access our key generation transform, we can go to our transforms tab, which is the fifth tab in our local object library, go to our data integrity folder, and we have this transform called the key generation transform. So I'm going to put this on the canvas, and I'm going to join the source to the target, source to the key generation, and then the key generation to the target table. Now, this table at the moment is called a template table in that it exists, and when we re-execute the job, normally, because of this option, we will want to drop and recreate. But in order to stop that functionality, I can right-click and I can say Import Table. When we import the table and we go back to our data flow, we can see that the icon has actually changed. We can see that it's now we, we have lines within the table, which means that it's considered a normal imported table. This means if I double click on the table and go again back to my options, the option to delete and recreate has been removed. But now that we've done that, we can utilize the key generation transform. So again, it doesn't make a difference. If I was to run this job, I would still get an error until I configure the key generation transform. Now, what the key generation transform is simply going to do is look at the existing target table, which for us is this key generation transform. It's going to look at the maximum primary key value and then start incrementing by one on top of that key. So let me demonstrate that to you. What we need to do when we set up the key generation transform is firstly select the target table. So for me, it's in HANA and it's this table called key generation. And that's another reason why you import tables. You import tables so you can use them in other parts of data services. If it was, a if it was still a template table, I wouldn't be able to use the, the key generation table here because I wouldn't see it. So I'm going to select the key generation transform. And then we need to decide on the key which will be incremented. So of course, in the real world, you would use a surrogate key. But to keep this demonstration simple, I'm going to use the existing custom ID key column as the generated key column. Lastly, all we need to do is choose the increment value. Now, you, it doesn't actually make a difference. I could choose one, three, four. So if I was to increment by two, for example, the new key would be 126, 128, 130, 132. The main thing being that we won't get an integrity constraint violation. But I'm going to leave this as one. So now that we've done that, we should be able to run this job. And the job should work correctly. Because again, we've already got 124 rows in this table. But what's going to happen is that data, data services is going to look at the maximum key in this table and it's going to increment by one. So let's put that to the test. The only thing I need to do to test it is to re-execute the job. So I'll click on yes and execute the job. So we can see that the job finished successfully. There were no errors. And just to prove that the actual task worked, I can go back to key generation, select the magnifying glass, and now we can see we've got 248 records. If I scroll down to the 125th, we should see now increments of more records. So you can see here I'm incrementing by one. Of course, if I go to the last row, we can see that we've got 249 records. But if I wanted to load this data again, I could obviously increment by two if I wanted to and re-execute, although I don't need to do this. I'm just doing this to demonstrate to you how the key generation transform works. So I'm re-executing this job, but this time I'm choosing the primary key and I'm incrementing by the value of two. The same 124 rows goes into the target. But if I again go to buy magnifying glass, we've, in, we've added another 125, 124 rows. And you can see now, 
if I scroll to the end of the table, we're incrementing by the value of 2 in our primary key. Now, of course, I can go to the HANA Studio just to make sure that this data is indeed in the HANA database. So all I need to do is expand my database, go into my catalog, and within the STS schema, we should have a new table in the tables folder called key generation. And if I right click and do a data preview on the key generation table, we should see that we've got that new table with around 350 rows. Obviously, it only retrieves the first 200 rows. Let's just change this maximum row to 500 and click on refresh. We've now, we can see we've retrieved 372 rows. And again, just to confirm, if I go to the end of this table, you can see that the primary key is incrementing by two. So that's a very simple demonstration in which you can utilize the key generation transform to get around issues of integrity key constraints when using SAP Business Objects Data Services to load data to SAP HANA.